Right, Mount Albert swimming pool. <laughs> oh, Alistair is here. Sorry, On Mr. your own, Chair. Alistair, do you want we have Margie up to come up as well? Yes, I would like Margie to come up, yep. um, mainly because I've misrepresented something her board said in the report, which we'll get to in a second. <laughs> Whoops. <coughs> Um, the report before you today relates to the trust deed for the Mount Albert Grammar School Community Swimming Pool Trust, which is a CCO. The trustees of that trust um, are proposing to amend the terms of that trust deed, as set out in um, the executive summary. Um, the background to this is that the role of the trust has changed significantly over the last couple of years so that now it is a relatively passive asset owning trust. So the, um, the major thrust of the proposed changes to the trustee to, to reduce the number of trustees required on the trust, um, which is supported by staff. And there are a few other um, sort of consequential amendments about the, the quorum and the um, number of trustees to, to make amendments to the trustee. I guess the, um, the one issue um, where staff disagree with um, the local board is that the um, trust is proposing that um, currently um, council appoints a majority of the trustees. The proposal is that one of the Albert Eden local board members was, would as of right be appointed as a trustee to the trust. Um, the staff are, are recommending that we do not accept um, that part of the amendment to the trust deed because of the potential conflicts of interest it may cause um, in the future. Not so much um, now with the current role of the trust being relatively passive, but there is the potential in the future for a conflict, uh, conflict of interest. Uh, we're suggesting that it's just left to council as to um, who it appoints to the trustees and not have um, the compulsion for it to be a local board member, although that would always be an option. Um, maybe if I hand over to Margie, or if I cover it off, I don't know. Yeah. Happy to take questions. Mm. Nothing you want to say, Margie? No. Um, I guess just to add um, to that is that since the trust has been in existence since the 90s, there's always been um, an elected member from the local body, whether it was the Mount Albert um, Community Board or the Albert Eden Local Board sitting on that trust, um, and that those trustees hold significant knowledge. I am a member of the Albert Eden Local Board, but I also need to declare I sit on, currently am one of those members selected to sit on that trust. Um, however, I'm speaking as a local board member, and the board have had several conversations around ensuring that there is continuity on that trust, that the institutional knowledge is held within that trust, and that this is actually one of the key community assets that <coughs> form part of the recreational network in Auckland. And um, it does, the, that trust merely owns the building, it does not own the land that it sits on, that belongs to Mount Albert Grammar School um, and the Ministry of Education. So actually we don't see it as a, an issue around there being a conflict of interest because um, historically it's been very clear about the roles there um, and Council have that management role and oversight of the facility. Uh, the board, um, the Albert Eden Local Board, um, continue to believe that there is an appropriate place for a member of the, an elected member to sit on that trust. Thank you. Egoff. Yeah, um, I like the idea of the shared facilities and we were discussing it uh, recently at Western Springs where you have a, a shared facility between a school and the community. I think that makes a lot of sense. But um, what I'm, this, this, is a, this goes back some time. What, what's the difference between how this governance works in relation to the Mount Albert Grammar Community Swimming Pool and the standard governance arrangements that we would enter into today. For example, what we might enter into for the, uh, the indoor courts at Western Springs. How, how does it differ and do we need some sort of alignment between what we're doing now <coughs> and what might have been decided you know, a decade, two decades ago? Uh, look, I'm, I'm not familiar with Western Springs' proposal um, uh, specifically, but um, 
the current council uh, board appointment policy relating to um, CCOs says that um, uh, elected members um, should only be appointed to the boards of CCOs and COs if there is a compelling reason to do so. <coughs> generally, it's to be avoided um, because of conflicts, both real and, and perceived. So um, I'd, I'd say that the, the similarities here was, would be the overarching council policy towards um, appointments. Yeah. Um, so just, just to clarify, Alistair, thank you for that. Um, I wasn't talking just so much about you know whether the elected member is on or not. I just wondered about the overall governance arrangements and whether this is a product of history and different, different from what we might generally do today. It, it is a um, product of history to the extent that um, the trust probably isn't even necessary today other than the fact that if the trust was to be wound up, the, the um, aquatics facility legal ownership would revert um, to the school. So a Good reason for keeping it going. Yes. Um, so look, the governance arrangements as they are are just a quirk of, of things and how they've evolved and it probably wouldn't be how we would <coughs> set it up today if we were starting from scratch. Yeah. It's my understanding, as most of the um, facilities where we have community access agreements is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Avondale College in my area. Um, they don't, we don't have council staff. Oh. Well, sorry, council um, elected members sitting on the trust board, so. Margie, do you? Um, so I guess this, this facility isn't part of the community access network um, and that million dollars that was granted last week into all those organisations. So this isn't part of that network. What I think is relevant is that it might be a product of history, but it's probably not for much longer, given that um, the work that was completed 18 months ago on the facility uh, at Mount Albert Aquatic was enough to keep it going for a further eight years, and then actually that's when the facility either needs to be replaced on that site or somewhere else within the council network. So um, I guess we're not taking a long-term investment on that site because that doesn't work for the school, it doesn't work for the community and doesn't work for um, the users of the facility. I have Councillor Simpson, Quacks, Cooper, Member Kake and Mike, Mike Lee. Thank you Mr Chair. Look, I, um, I'm trying to look at this from a helicopter view at, at, from good governance and so you've had, uh, you want the reduction of trustees which will make a reduction of the quorum, all right? So I suppose if we've got some from the school and some from council, I want to look at the, the fact that at a quorum, how do we know that we must have at least one of each? And, and that's not in the resolution, so that's my first question. And my second question, can you just confirm <coughs> where the chair comes from? Is that, is that completely, because you've got council and school, and is the chair a separate one? I just... So, um, your first question, yes, there is already a provision in the trust deed that um, for a quorum there must be um, uh, a trustee appointed by either the school and, and council, so that's um, not being changed, which is right, why it's not detailed not a, there. Okay. Um, your second question of, sorry, I've got a mind like a goldfish and I've already forgotten. The chair, so you've got, th oh, you yes. know, you've got three plus three, or two plus two now, yes. so who, who, who's the she chair? Is that, is that one of now. either side or someone completely different? No, it's a, a council um, appointee and um, the trustee doesn't specify um, whether that, who that should be, but um, as of sort of tradition, there's been an independent chair appointed by council right. and the local board members have filled the other trustee roles. Okay, and then just my last, if I may, and, re <coughs> and the key reason for making the trust, reducing the number? And Practicalities. Um, sevens a lot of trustees to try to find for a trust which now has virtually nothing to do. Right. Um, okay. A very passive okay. role, and it's a lot of time and effort to go find. Okay, and just confirm, and I think you've said it, but just for my own peace of mind, if we don't specifically stipulate a local board representative, it doesn't mean that the rules can't have one anyway, because that, I mean, Auckland Council has two yes. shared governance entities, so it, 
I mean, you could argue that that a council representative is a local board representative. Yes, or and, and to, to be clear, um, with the current role of, of the trust um, as staff, we wouldn't be fundamentally opposed to having local board members sitting there um, as a trustee. But as Margie's pointed to, um, sometime in the future, decisions are going to have to be made about the future of that facility and um, who knows where the governance framework review and where the local board will be right, in that decision making conflict. process, okay. but they could well be the decision makers and to have them as of right sitting as trustees on their trust, there could be in a conflict in the future. So we're not saying, hey, don't have local board members on this trust at all. All we're saying is don't have local board members on this trust as of right, because there will come a time when that um, could and will present a conflict. Yep. Thank you. Councillor Quacks. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I look, I, I'm sort of interested in this um, this perceived or potential uh, conflict of interest for a local board member. Um, would we not expect that a local board member would handle any potential uh, conflict of interest like anybody else? Um, and so, what is the message here that we may be sending to the local board by not uh, having a local board member, as of right, somebody um, with local knowledge, and I would have thought that in um, in deference to the principle of subsidiarity, uh, this would be particularly important to have a local board member uh, on on this on this board. Um, look, I think you're right. Conflicts are there to be managed and can be managed. I think the issue is one of uh, perception and good practice. Um, eventually, um, my team would like to bring a report probably to this committee where we do in fact devolve a lot of the decision making around community focused CCOs like this to the relevant local board, which will um, ironically probably increase the potential um, conflict of interest because um, the principle of subsidiarity, the local board, I would argue, should be making decisions uh, around the appointments to these CCOs, governing their performance, funding issues, should sit at a local board, but that's only going to exacerbate the potential for a conflict of interest if that's where we go with this. So you're right, conflicts are there to be managed, and I have no doubt um, you all as, as politicians and members of the community manage conflicts on a daily basis. But the issue we're fighting with here is uh, one of perception and also um, a very real potential at some stage. Uh, Maggie's looking slightly quizzical, so maybe I'll give her the right of reply. <laughs> no, it's the very real potential, I think those words are. <coughs> Councillor Cooper. Thank you. Um, I'm, I support these recommendations. I mean, I think that if we look at all our other CCOs, we don't have elected members on them. Um, and this is the opportunity to get this in line with everything else. I do, I do worry about conflicts. And, and if you're, um, the trouble is you, could manage, you can manage a conflict on day-to-day -day stuff, but if you get big, huge decisions like this, what is the point of being there if you can't input into them? That's the, the concern about having it as, as of right. But seeing that's not even in there, um, I'm just supporting these um, recommendations. I, don't, I think it's best practice to just move along as we've done with all our um, other CCOs and make sure we don't have elected members and that leaves people really free to contribute their views at the time of change or anything like that very freely and frankly. I'm happy to move the recommendations, Mr Chairman. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Simpson, so member Kofi. Kilda, um, look, I'm, I'm not opposed to I think I'll vote against. trustee numbers going up or down at all, actually. Um, it, it really is about the precedent that we set. And it, my, my question to you is can you confirm mm. in the past or currently the Māori representation on this trust? And I say that in the context of all trusts, all interests. But I'm just picking on you because you're the report in front of us right now. <laughs> I've got a supplementary question to you. So unfortunately I'll be in front of you for most reports about trusts so <laughs> I'll get prepared. Um, no. Historically I don't think there has been strong um, 
Maori representation on this trust. Margie will probably have a better idea. She's had a longer association with the trust than me. Um, so I, I can't give you too much of a way of background. All I can um, say going forward that um, due to the incredibly passive nature of this trust, uh, who's represented on, on the trust is probably of little or no consequence because in effect it does nothing. <laughs> don't hold back, just get it out. <laughs> It's all right, they don't pay you. Well, it's not quite the answer I was after, but um, I guess it's in the context of Article 1, mm -hmm. in terms of the general um, commitment to partnerships and with, with Māori representation. I don't agree with your Māori impact statement saying that there is no impact for Māori. Actually, representation is very important. As, right. as a um, broader principle looking at uh, councils, uh, board appointment policy for CCOs, which covers appointments like this. There is um, uh, provisions within that to um, increase the diversity of the makeup of our boards generally, and um, to help further that objective, uh, members of the IMSB are included on nomination and interview panels for um, CCO director appointments. Um, so. It's probably more evident at the substantive CCOs than um, at the more community-facing trusts, um, where it's generally harder to get anyone, let alone be picky about who. So it's a timely reminder, we've got to walk the talk. We just had the treaty impact statement in the previous report, and it's a classic example of not walking the talk. Go on. Councillor Lee, Mike, need <coughs> Just a couple of questions. Um, I may have missed it, but it, the report says the, the local board was invited to comment and has not given any feedback. Could we have be updated on? Yes, as, as I alluded to, slightly misrepresenting, um, the local board apparently it was considered at a workshop, which is why Maggie's here. So. Yeah, so we've had to, um, a report come up um, to the board, to a business meeting, but we'd also discussed it at a workshop and the board's view was that the um, direction that the trust deed was seeking was supported by the board, um, but there was no written formal feedback provided um, back through to staff regarding that, but it was discussed at workshop. And so the, 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 the trust um, which owns the pool wants to change um, it, its constitution and the, the council officers say, fair enough, we agree with that, but one thing, we, we want to remove the right. The headmaster from Mount Albert Grammar, he's in, in there as of right, but any as of right elected representatives, elected officials of the council, if you will, um, should not um, be on that board as of right. That's what the... That's our so advice. what does the local board think of that? Uh, the local board strongly believe that there should be representatives of the local board as trustees for that trust. As of right? Yes. Okay, now I heard the officer talk about the principle of subsidiarity, which you don't often hear and hear when it comes to local boards, car parks or whatever, <laughs> um, and that the, that principle may lead, because of the power, the powers of the local board over the swimming pool, may lead to a potential conflict of interest. Is that right? Yes. But um, then we look through here, we see that the role of the trust is, is fairly passive. Uh, I, 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 I'm not convinced. Um, actually, if we're talking about the principle of subsidiarity, and we should be, we should be listening to the local board. And therefore, if you raise that argument, it's a two-edged sword. And I actually believe that the local board's right um, as members, elected officials of this council and representatives of their community should have should be there as of right. So I, I can't accept the recommendations of non-elected people removing elected people from these sorts of positions. Yeah, just, just On the be... principle of subsidiarity. Just to be clear, with its staff recommendation, that's our advice. You are the decision makers in this. We're not removing anybody. And our um, advice to you is that um, local board members may still be a 
pointed to this if um, our recommendation is followed, but just not as of right. But but on your advice, they wouldn't be. Yep. No. Okay, so <laughs> well, let's be let's be frank about it. You don't want elected people on that swimming pool trust. No, um, as, of right. as of right. Yeah. Right. No, no, at all, because the same logic the same logic pertains. Be honest about it. You don't want them there. We, as I said before. If we were making a recommendation, we will have to shortly because the trustees' terms are expiring and this really isn't a discussion for here. I have no fundamental objection to local board members sitting on this trust at this time. But in the future, there will be a greater potential um, for a perceived conflict of interest. Trustees um, fulfilling their duties as um, a trustee have to act in the best interest of the trust. And when decisions come as to what will be the future of that pool and the objectives of that trust are to maintain that pool and to continue in that pool, but the local board may have to make a decision to actually um, not support that pool in the future, but to in fact build a pool somebody else, uh, somewhere else. The local board members sitting there as trustees have got conflicting interests there. On one hand, they will have their obligation as a trustee to do everything in their power to make sure that that pool exists in its current form. On the other hand, they will have to make a um, decision in the best interest of the yeah, council. Surely, they de like everyone else, they declare if there is a conflict of interest. That's and what we do at every meeting. Surely, on the same logic, we shouldn't be here. Two members to the brow beating of the staff. No, can I? That reduces the quorum. Anything else, Councillor Lee? No? Okay. Councillor Watson. Oh, thank you. I think uh, earlier on the piece someone uh, mentioned the word uh, practical or practicalities. Um, we've got a situation here <coughs> where the, the local board has always had someone on it by the sounds of things or for a good period of time. Um, there's clearly a, uh, a local board interest in this facility. The, the future I think someone mentioned eight years, but but who knows? With the council, you never know how how long time periods uh, stretch out when it comes to replacement of facilities. There is going to be that um, intervening period, and I think Margie mentioned the notion of uh, institutional knowledge, which I think is is very important when we come to um, issues such as this, where changes might get, be getting uh, proposed. <coughs> And if you don't have someone there that, that has some notion of where you come from, um, then that sometimes can result in decision making that doesn't uh, reflect the, their overall good. They obviously have a concern here. So just notwithstanding the fact there doesn't seem to be too much going on with the trust, the local board clearly has a concern that in this transitionary period that it's highly desirable that they're ensured that someone from the board be on the trust. That, that's clear. Um, so given their association with this trust, um, and, and I think it goes beyond just one member, I think it goes to several members by the looks of things, then, then I'm inclined to, to, to agree with councillors Kat Quacks and Lee that uh, it's important to listen to the local board and what, what they're saying. Um, I think conflicts of interest can be managed. Um, and I think that in the event of a change at some indeterminate point in the future, I think it's even more important that there be someone there that has some notion of the, the historical antecedents to, to where you may ever land at that point. So I, I guess, Mr Chair, what, I, what I'm signalling is that the fact that the local board have a concern, I would have thought practicalities might have resulted in the assurance that yes there is always going to be a local board person there but that doesn't seem to be the case and that the local board's looking to have a little bit more certainty so I'm inclined to support that I think. Hmm. Well, I'm listening to the Manafana we represent the say thinking probably antecedents would uh, qualify for someone else being on there as well. Um, well at the moment it's just Councillor Simpson, you're Sorry. next. Thank you. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable about second this. I always thought that because the Auckland Council trustee appointment could be a local board, they could be there anyway, all yep. right? Yeah, yeah. 
And so that was kind of where I was coming from. I suppose my question now, just to be really clear, is the appointment comes on this trust, comes via the Appointments and Performance Committee. Is that correct? Yes. So it's not... And your, your only um, concern around not having it absolutely mentioned now is that in the future, when potentially there is a disposal, is that correct? You said you, it's not now, because you, you, you haven't got a problem about now. It's, you've got a problem about what potentially could happen. So I just want to tease out the practicalities of the future concern you have about, I mean, because the way I see it, I mean, I'm, I'm on the Appointments and Performance Committee. I mean, I wouldn't have any problem about putting a local board member on it. But I just kind of wonder why it has to be in here now and what's the worry you have about not having it in and in the future again? Just Can you just run up past me again? Sorry. Right. If we go back to what Council's policy is in appointing um, people to the um, boards of CCOs and, and trusts, okay. it is not to have um, elected members appointed as board members. So the question is, what's so special about this trust that justifies a deviation from that policy. Mm -hmm. And we as staff are, are recommending to you that there isn't anything sufficiently different about this trust. Now that's not to say we do not think that local board members should sit there, but our advice to you is why lock ourselves into a position where we're um, perpetually in breach of that policy by saying we'll, as of right, have a local board member there. And as it currently stands, I don't think there would be a barrier to having a local board member there. But that is a decision and that is information relevant when it comes to the Appointments and Performance Review Committee as to who to appoint here. Not, I'd suggest, um, to this process of amending the trust deed. So, can I just, sorry Mr Chairman, that's important. The first sentence you said is normally elected members would not be the Auckland Council representative. Hmm. Well then, sorry, I don't want to second this because hmm. I think if we really believe that the local board should have a place, we're asking for an exemption on that policy. No. No. No, no, no. no. So, so let's be quite clear. Let's just look about the major CCOs we have. It's been made quite clear, and, and the Mayor was obviously have a new policy, a controversial policy, but made it quite clear. Elected members can apply to be on those boards. Can apply, but not there as of right. right. No, right. not as right. And so you can apply. And if you, and if you, if you stump up and your qualifications are equal to, if, and better than external people who come forward, then the performance and appointments committee should be assessing any councillors to be suitable, okay. or in this okay. case, so, any local board members to be suitable. So Am the re recommendation up there is entirely consistent with our appointments policy. policy. Okay. And, we had, we and had I don't have a swimming anyway. pool, so in, in the, who's got the delegation for swimming pools? So I think we were Alistair is coming from in the future, and it could be the near future, meaning the LTP, where because we're going to a new 10-year plan, there is no swimming pools at the moment in the 10-year plan. But the community facilities plan that has come back has identified the need for a pool in the inner west and possibly two pools. That seems to be the next priority then followed by West Auckland. So the issue there is there could be a conflict coming up sooner rather than later because there could be a decision to have a pool in the foe, but what it will impact on is what to do with the pool in Mount Albert where there's equally, uh, you know, we don't want to be losing that pool or a pool in that area. And so the Albert Eden Board are going to be fighting pretty tough, I would have thought, to try and make sure that if there is going to be something replaced in eight or 10 or beyond <coughs> years, that, um, that Mount Albert doesn't lose its pool. So that's where the conflicts can arise going forward. Uh, look, I'm, I'm not sure anymore, Mr Chair. Um, mm. Somebody else can second it. Okay. Sounds, so, doesn't sound very democratic to me. Second. Yeah, Councillor Darby will second. Thank you, Councillor Darby. Right, we have Councillor Hills and then Mayor Goff. <coughs> Thank you. Um, and I guess 
first of all, we've had a lot of experience of this on the Kaipatsuki Local Board because we have so many community organisations that get local board funding. We've actually cropped up a whole lot of issues along the way when the deeds actually forced a local board member to be there and a local board member couldn't be on and it was then you have to change the deed and then the trust is actually in breach. So is it my understanding that by uh, by opposing the the provision to automatically elect means that is the status quo, it's what's been forever? So No. no. The, the, the status quo is just that council will appoint um, four trustees. Now, um, what the trust is proposing is to first of all, reduce the number of trustees and to automatically make one of those trustees a local board member, but that um, that has not been there before. It's been a practice that local board members have ended but up as on, of right. yeah. but not as of right. Right. Yeah, so my, just my concern if we, you know, I think this is becoming a lot more controversial than it needs to be. My concern is if that we force automation or an automatic thing, then we're tying things in that have to be done as opposed to have a choice. What if the next local board decides they don't want to or they can't or they're too busy or... If they all don't get elected, there'll be no continuity. Sorry. Um, can I just respond to that comment? And, and that's this deed that belongs... This is the trust's deed that's been in existence since the 1990s and in there it stipulates that there will be a member of the Eden Albert Community Board sitting on that trust. So it's a historical document that has required someone to be there. Um, and what we're trying to do is bring... Um, the board were trying to support the trust to bring it into the 21st century. And that we could... They could shrink their numbers. And that um, they still retained that composition. I guess with just a quick example is that in Kaipataki, it was all people that had to be on and then we changed them all to liaison. So there was a liaison person from the local board as opposed to forcing someone on all the boards because then they, then they could come back and advocate on the local board but then they couldn't vote and the same the other way. That was, so we removed all the, because the old North Shore way was to have everyone as a director or whatever and all our community trusts and now it's just a liaison that has to be at the meetings but it's not actually, because it made it very awkward when they came back and said, look, I want to support these things but I can't vote because you're officially on both. So with that's, that's my experience over the last six years, that we moved away from what we're kind of asking. So I don't, I mean, yeah. I just think it's becoming more controversial than, yep. than it needs to be. But I'm yep. also a bit, um, yeah. it's hard to not support the local board's direction. I just know in our experience, it's been, has been difficult have, when we did have people officially in positions, and now we've moved completely away from that in that area. Hey, golf, do you? Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. We're spending a long time debating an issue when we're told that the, the trust has no real role, having just debated a car park, which is going to be a car park, whether it's New World or, uh, or owned by council. So um, I have some sympathy with Councillor Lee's point earlier. Um, I don't want to prolong it. I just want to ask, first of all, a question. Of the council-appointed trustees, we currently have four council-appointed trustees. Yeah. Uh, how many of those are members of the community, uh, of the local board? Um, three of them are, um, although one wasn't when she was appointed, but she got elected. So we've, we've got three out of four currently local board members. Can I, I want to make two points then. One, I, I don't think the conflict of interest is actually the material factor, because as everybody's agreed, you can manage a conflict of interest whether you are there as of right or whether you are there as a selected member and happen to be a, a, a local board member. So I don't think the conflict of interest is the issue. The issue, and I don't think the issue is whether or not local board members should be on the trust. Um, because as you've shown, three quarters of your local, uh, of, of your, your council appointed people are local board. The question is this, should you be there as of right because you are a local board member or should you be selected because you're the best person and you also happen to be a local board member? And I, I guess my preference is the latter, that anybody selected for any position ought to be there selected on merit, not necessarily as of right because they're on, on the local board. But it's a line ball call. I, I, I don't think we're actually are going to achieve a lot either way in the decision we make now. So why don't we just um, put it to a vote? 
I've got Council Philip and, and then I'm going to put it to the vote after that. So just remember, all we're doing here is, is approving the variation to the deed. We're not doing talking about appointments that can come in the future at the appointments committee. Councillor Philip Young. Thank you, Chair. Just a question and clarification now. With the old deed, was there a stipulation with the old deed that the community board member will have to be there? The there may have been originally, as Margie's saying so, but the, the, the current version prior to this amendment does not have that requirement in there. So the current version hasn't got that as of right? No. Uh, the local board, and, and, and so the members that are currently on there, mm. um, obviously using uh, the current uh, deed, um, are they also there right? through election, through nomination, or as of right? Uh, they were appointed by the, um, in the previous term, by the CCO Governance Committee. Um, and one, one of the members, uh, uh, Glenda Fryer, she was appointed prior to that, um, but got elected at the previous, um, previous election, so she wasn't a local board member when she got appointed. So, through you, Chair, is there any... I just want to ask Margie a question as well. Yep. Margie, look... Since you've been on the end, and, and I mean, just just clear, just just confirm how many years you've been on there. Um, I've I've just completed two terms, so that's six years. Yeah, and and have there been any occasion in the six years that you've had to declare conflict of interest? I've declared my interest at every meeting, but they're not conflicts. I don't perceive them as conflicts. <coughs> and, and so supplementary, that still allowed you to vote. Absolutely. I, I, again, all the way through around any recommendations that were there. Absolutely. It was just interest because you're a local board member, um, but there was no conflict of interest where you no. weren't, um, where you couldn't vote. Absolutely, 100%. Um, you know, it doesn't impact on the business of the trust. <coughs> I don't believe it impacts on the business of the board either. The trust actually has a building that has no very limited financial assets. They're, um, Council runs a management contract for it. Um, you know, it is very distant from the day-to-day -day business of council. However, they're council appointees and it's a community facility that is an integral part of the network that we try and deliver to improve sport and recreation in our communities, which is one of our drivers at council. And, and, and just one more question. Sorry, Chair. And... So, Maggie, your, your view is that you don't want to go through a, a selection process. The local board just wants to be, a member wants to be there as of right. That's basically what you're asking. I think you? it's, um, yes, I guess I, what I believe is that the local board should be able to say these are the appropriate people, whether it gets rubber stamped through the performance monitoring committee or not is that there is an appropriate place on that trust for members of the local board who are voted in to represent their community and this is an asset in the community. Okay. And Chair, just one comment. I, 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 I applaud the staff for bringing the report here. And, and I mean, because that's your role, that's your job is to say here are some options and, and, and D was, uh, sorry, B was there as an option and it, it is up to us. So when I hear other councillors say, oh, look, you know, you're, you're just putting this in there because you just don't want the local board, is, 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 is rubbish. Um, so I, I, I congratulate the fact that we have a recommendation because uh, for us, it, it is up to us around this particular table. So I just wanted to make that point. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, procedural question to you. Uh, you said you're going to take a, a vote on that. I, I'm assuming it's because I don't think there'll be any disagreement with anything else. It's around this issue of whether the, the local board yeah. uh, the member uh, should be on it by right. So I, 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 I'm just checking that that is indeed your intention to, to have a vote on that, just to sort that out, whether people agree with that or not, and then, and then, the, then the balance of, oh, the, balance of the, the items. Is that correct? Well, I suppose I've been waiting for an amendment. Oh, I'll, I'll put one, one up there. One, one, more, one, just one more question. You know, you if you want an amendment, because, because you know... Aren't all the trustees local board members anyway now? I didn't realise that. Yeah, three out of four are. Three out of four. <coughs> four. Three, can I respond to that? Three out of four of the council appointed 
trustees. There are another three trustees that come from Mount Albert Grammar. <coughs> That's what I mean, of the so council. three out of seven. So if mm. it went to the appointments and performance committee, it could be the same. There's no reason to say it wouldn't be the same. It, yep. In fact, there will be a report coming to you next month, <laughs> which right. may or may not recommend that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we have a mover and a second. Are you aware that we're moving A, 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 a and B? Wouldn't that be a... Take B separate, be a negative? Negative? If, you, if you want to keep it as of right on, you'll vote well, against B. Exactly. It's... Councillor Lee. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I, I, I won't hold up the, the meeting. Um, a weakness in this report, Mr Chairman, is that there are no local board views and implications in the report, and I don't know why the report couldn't have waited. I, I'm not sure if it's that urgent Canvas to really actually good. receive those in writing. We've heard from board member what's in it, and it's quite clear that the board uh, feels that the obligations of the original trustee um, should be upheld in terms of democratic community representation. Now, there um, is a fine argument about whether uh, the council's representatives um, should be unusually um, elected people or as of right or um, not. In other words, the argument is local board members are free to stand, um, but they will be judged whether they're suitable or not. I think that's really an insult when it comes to community democracy. The local board members are elected representatives of the Auckland Council. They are selected by the people of Auckland, by the people of their wards, not by a small group of people in the back room or, or Sheffield's consultancy uh, recruitment uh, executives. They're chosen by the people. And I think in terms of democracy and the principle of subsidiarity, we should respect that and we should respect the deed and the purpose of the deed in terms of uh, democratic community representation. So um, I would act strongly oppose the recommendations to remove the appointment of local board members to run the swimming pool um, as of right. I, I think that the status quo, as the trust board has asked, uh, in terms of that uh, part of the representation, should remain. It's not for the council um, to override what the trust board is recommending in, in terms of that constitution, if it means <coughs> removing democracy or, or diminishing democracy. Hmm. Well, that was wide ranging. Um, we have an amendment, okay? And so I am going to take that as an amendment. So this is not a new. Uh, so you have it in front of you, moved by Councillor Watson and seconded by Councillor Quack. So that would be the whole A to A one to four, with the only change being in one. Okay. Are we quite clear? By approving this goes against our council policy, but why not? Just sorry, Chair, just clarification, because if the amendment, which is obviously going to be put first, if the amendment is goes through, I'm assuming then that B goes or not? I'm, I'm assuming B does go yes, because it's saying need, that they wouldn't. Don't need so, B. Yeah, don't need okay. B. Thank you. Yeah. All right, any questions, anyone? Okay. Got a mover and we've got a seconder. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? No. Aye. Show of Point hands. Division. Show of hands. Of show of hands, because it wasn't. Uh, Mr. Chairman, even. point of order, Mr. Chairman. I've called for a division. Oh, you must sorry. take a division once it's been called for. Sorry, I didn't hear you. That, that, I didn't hear you, Councillor Quack. A point of order for sorry. clarification, Mr Chairman. When somebody calls a point of order, I mean a division, after it's been put, Fine. is that valid? Yes. Because last, oh. earlier you denied that. I didn't hear Speaking it Speaking to the point of order, Mr I Chairman. It, I didn't hear it before. Speaking to the ch point of order, a division can be called any time before okay. or during the vote is being taken. That's correct. It was already just been... But it was after. It was after. It doesn't It was matter. after the vote. Yes, it does. Just had the vote. The vote hasn't I think it was after, Councillor Cracks, yes. wasn't it? Well, yeah. so, so we didn't oh, declare the, the result of the taken. vote. 
Mr Chairman. Mr Chairman, we didn't declare the result of the vote because yeah. it seemed too even. So okay, right, we will have a division I think then. we should have a division. Okay. <coughs> Councillor Clow? No. Uh, Councillor Collins? Yes. Councillor Cooper? No. Councillor Darby? Against. Councillor Filipaina? Aye. Mayor Goff? No. Councillor Hills? No. Member Henry? Yep. Uh, Councillor Hulse? No. Councillor Denise Lee? No. Councillor Mike Lee? Aye. Um, Councillor Quacks? Yes. Councillor Sayers? <coughs> Four. Councillor Simpson? Yes. Councillor Stewart? Yes. Member Kake? Four. Councillor John Walker? No. No. Councillor Wayne Walker? Yes. Councillor Watson? Yes. Carried. Right, so that is amendment has been carried 11 to 8, so we'll take that as a substantive, which will be an A, all of A and not B. All those in favour? No. Against? No. It's carried. Okay, so there we are. Can we, can we make a note that it's in breach of the policy? Oh, <coughs> oh God. Oh, no. oh, boy. It is. It's called Roger Politics. Well, it is, isn't Demi it? So De I'm just diminution asking, of democracy. I'm asking, Mr oh. Chair, can oh, we note that it's... I, I, the think, it's I think council. the... Uh, it's just a fair question. It's, it's a, Parliament it's a, got it wrong. Can we, can we, and it's a question of you and the Secretariat, can we record that the resolution breaches the policy? Oh. We wouldn't normally do something like no. No. It's we, an appropriate we, we could, we could, but I'm asking that it's been noted, I think, by the chair new of the, the appointments committee and the deputy <laughs> chair. New, new policies you can breach, great. Okay, we have one more, one more report, folks. Thank you. We can just take and as. When did this 